Hello everybody, it's your boy Mardux and like always I want to help you find your new favorite indie game in this indie game showcase video. Important note, I got the key to the hero of this video from developers. Bullet Heaven Genre, in my opinion, it's the best name for it. Many people still refer to these games as Vampire Survivor clones, which have flooded the gaming market with plenty of similar titles that only have different graphics or minor changes. However, some projects aim to do more than just basic rescue and provide more value. The question is, which one is today's game? Time Tracker. Time Tracker is a roguelike game that uses bullet heaven mechanics to build a unique story around it, making it stand out from other games. The game is currently in early access with the intention to be fully released in October. As the world was conquered by alien bug rays, an eternal darkness spread across the globe. Humanity had to scatter across the galaxy in search of a place to live. Now, what's left of humanity is trying to change time by sending an elite unit, which is us as a last hope to the timeline affected by alien race in order to restore peace and prevent another big catastrophe. By choosing one of the available soldiers, you can start fighting for humanity. At the beginning, we only have one available map, but by beating stages and fulfilling tasks, you will unlock more. Often, you will unlock one stage to progress further and another as an optional side quest in form of a places that require construction domain, something like that. Sometimes you will get crystals, relics and upgrades, but sometimes you will unlock whole new level with additional tasks. In simple words, you have to finish stage after stage to progress through harder levels, reach the main boss of the timeline and stop the alien invasion. Be the hero. Once you enter a stage, you have to complete simple tasks and battle hordes of enemies. It's up to you whatever you want to survive until the timer reaches zero, or you can choose to leave the stage by activating the living protoc earlier. Holding on until the last second will grant you more crystal to collect and your hero will gain more experience eventually leveling up. Instead of unlimited map size like in other Vampire Survivor clones, Time Tracker developers have placed you in the large but limited area. You don't have to search for light beacons or supply pods forever. Stages give you a limited time to perform tasks and the harder the level, the more time you will get. Thankfully, you don't have to spend 30 minutes. Time tracker stages are 3 to 5 minutes long, which is enough. Nice. Typically, like in other Bullet Heaven titles, by gaining levels, you will get access to new perks, skills, or weapons. Often, these weapons have to be placed in one of six available slots, and the same goes for additional perks or support skills. Time Tracker uses a similar system but in its own way. Throughout the gameplay you will receive weapons and perks, but at the start you only have two unlocked slots, for weapons and limited space, for perks. Other slots have to be unlocked with crystals, and starting from the top to bottom they become more expensive. Additionally you can collect enhancements and relics that provide you even more abilities and improved stats. Relics and enhancements are quite rare and always welcome when you get them. Regarding weapons, the game doesn't limit you to how many of the same type you can use. You can have 6 flamethrowers if you want, or 6 photon blades. It's your choice. That's a lot of damage! There is even a relic that provides better benefits the more you have equipped the same weapon type. It's good to check what specific perks add to your weapons, because different guns have different pros and cons. Some perks will be more useful and some less, but you can check and swap them freely to see what works best for your playstyle. Besides that, you can also upgrade your weapon and other skills and perks. Crystals you collect while playing can be used to upgrade basic stats of your units too. There are four different skills that can be purchased with crystals. Survival, Combat, Agility and Focus, currently up to the 10th level max. While making this video, only three characters are playable, but each of them has a special skill that is activated by pressing the spacebar. By getting achievements and their further requirements, you collect the data that allows you to unlock bonuses and better stats of skills for the next start of the timeline, and that works globally for all your characters. So there are plenty of things to upgrade or change. Enemies, like in similar games, come in different shapes and types. Of course, there are weaker ones as well as much stronger ones. Standard enemies don't need too much explanation, they are just there to be killed, even if they have a cool design. There is nothing more to it. You are the hero, they are the enemies. You understand the agreement. Oh my god! Wow! 
there are few types of bosses and they are obviously more dangerous than standard enemies. Currently there are only four types of bosses with one being the main boss of the timeline. They are harder, but with right waypoints and properly built character, they are not a big problem. Sometimes they can't even get stuck on the map, making it easier to finish them off. I think I've covered most of the gameplay mechanics, so let's talk a little bit about the graphic. If you watched my previous video, you probably know that I like pixel art, which we have here. 90% of the time everything is easy to read, but I think there is just still too much happening on the screen. Even if the game tries to present some story during battles, there's so much going on that you won't be able to read text boxes from characters or get more about the story, which is quite limited. This isn't a JRPG with ton of text. Still, it's good looking and even with the screen flooded by enemies you can easily spot your character. There are a bunch of small things that don't add up correctly, like crystals. On your first run you won't be able to unlock everything, but by obtaining a few global upgrades this won't be a problem. Once you maximize everything, you don't have the option to do anything else with them, besides spending them on the re-rolling rewards. Not everything is clear or readable, especially during battles, and bosses are not that challenging. Another thing that I think is wrong is that when you kill a bunch of enemies, you don't instantly pick up crystals. They fall to the ground, taking less than a second, but you still have to wait for them. This issue aren't game breaking or destroying your experience with the game, but fixing thing or two will make the game more enjoyable. Overall, the developers are working hard on the future updates, and there will be definitely more content to enjoy. Even currently there's a fourth character, but unfortunately it's not playable yet. So getting back to the question, which of the typical Vampire Survivor clone game is a time tracker? I personally think it's above the rest. Time Tracker adds more depth to the bullet heaven genre and shows that you can use a well-known formula as the core of the game and still build a compelling story around it. If you think Time Tracker is for you, or you just want to check it out, there is a link in the description provided by the developers that will take you directly to the Steam page of the game. Whatever you like this video or not, feel free to comment and please subscribe for more videos about indie games. It will make me happy. See you next time.